Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can add emotion to your Love and Labs AI voice. So I've noticed a lot of people have had issues with this, so I'm going to teach you guys a couple simple tips and tricks and things to keep in mind to help get you a good generation. So first of all, and if you watch my video about uh, how to add laughter to your AI generation, uh, same thing I talked about in the beginning carries over here. You want to use the advanced view of the Eleven Labs generator. So you can do that by going to the top right of your like little Eleven Labs console here, and you can go to advanced in the top right here. The reason why is this gives you quicker access to certain settings, such as the model settings, and these are actually quite important. And I'll explain why in a little bit, but you want to move to the advanced view if you haven't already. So first of all, uh, first tip is that honestly, sometimes it is as simple as just proper grammar or po proper punctuation. So if you um, have a certain instance where maybe you didn't have punctuation set up right, or you aren't using proper grammar, that can actually set the AI model off a little bit and prevent it from properly conveying the emotions it needs to. So um, honestly, sometimes just proofread the material you're sending the AI and uh, see if it's the exactly the way it should be and uh, if it isn't make the changes regenerate and see if that helps because that actually can help but sometimes that doesn't always help and it might not be that might not be the case so one thing you can do is you can also write it more like a book so you can have in quotation marks the the actual text you're trying to generate and then at the end say he said angrily or the character said angrily these kinds of things can help the ai model understand the proper context of the sentence and say it in the correct way so here we're going to try this out with a generation here and we're going to see what it's like i don't know why you ate my homework but don't do it again he said angrily okay okay uh i'll stop eating your homework he said calmly. That was pretty good. That was kind of the well, what I was looking for here. And another thing that actually can help is if you're trying to convey like a sort of like pause or a worry, you can have a you can have dot dot dot. You can do like a sort of dot 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 kind of thing. And that actually does help in some instances if you're trying to convey like a sort of like pause or like an anxiety or a sort of worry. Those kinds of if you do dot 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 you can help, you can kind of provide the AI model that sort of context for that particular circumstance. So that's another thing to keep in mind. One thing, another thing you can do, and it's a little bit hit or miss, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it kind of just depends, is you can have the tone set up like this, where you have a less than symbol, the tone greater than, and then a colon, and then the, the actual text you're trying to generate in quotation marks. So the model does parse this information, but it doesn't actually generate the voice with this text. So this text does get sent to the model, and the model does take it into account, but it doesn't generate the actual generation with that text. Sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. This isn't something that was exactly documented by Eleven Labs, but it is something that the model does take into account. So your results with it might be hit or miss because this, is, this isn't officially something that is supposed to work, but sometimes it does. So it's a thing to try. It may or may not work for you, but it's a thing to try. Another thing that can help, and uh, it is something you should try to toy with regardless of if you're trying to um, add emotion because it can just make your generation sound better in some instances, is the stability. So the stability, the easiest way of explaining it, is how creative or emotional or just, for lack of a better word, interesting the model can get. So it's basically, um, when you go more variable, it can get a little more spontaneous, a little more like creative with its generation, which means it can add more emotion. And this is sometimes a good thing, but also sometimes not a good thing. If you go a little bit too far on the variable side, you can have cases where it isn't using the proper context at all. So something that should be sad becomes happy, or even in some cases, the AI gets really loud for no reason. Certain things like this can happen if you have the stability a little bit more variable. So you don't want to go a little bit too far on that side. But if you go a little bit more on the stable side, you'll have a generation that is consistent throughout and that isn't all that crazy, but you might have a case where it becomes 
very monotone or very deadpan. There are some cases where you might want a more stable generation as opposed to a more variable generation if you just specifically need somebody saying stuff out and you don't really need emotion or anything like that. In that case, you can go for more stable so nothing's taken out of context or misconstrued, but quite honestly, if you're there's there's only like a certain number of cases where you would really want that so the best case scenario is to just keep it somewhere in the middle the default in 11 labs is 50 percent sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less can help but it's all kind of just about what you're generating and it just you kind of just need to toy with it so if you toy with it you can kind of get a sort of sweet spot which can also kind of vary between different generations so you might you might have a certain prompt that you're giving it where it works best with a certain amount of stability and then another where it works better with a different amount it all kind of just depends honestly so it's honestly it is just kind of a matter of toying with it use some of these to keep some of these things i've told you today in mind and keep kind of generating it and eventually you will get a generation that fits you well. Another thing you can do is that sometimes you might have some generations where one thing is said the way you want it, but then another sentence is said another way. So what you can do is you can download both generations and use some audio editing software to splice it up like Audacity. That can also work too. There's many different ways of doing this, but honestly, the way I would do it is keep some of these things in mind, toy around with it, mess with the settings, try different things, and um, see what you get. So... That's all I have to say for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If there's anything you want me to cover, tell me, and I'll probably take a look at it. Give it a, give it a video. And, uh, yeah, take care.